Hello, my name is John Hall. I'm the new police chief of the Northfield Police Department. Uh, what you're looking at right now is one of our cruisers in the police department behind me. I'm going to give you a tour of the building so you can see the conditions of the inside of it. I'm excited to be in this community and be involved with this community. I have two kids that go to the elementary school and that's my main motive behind uh, making this move. I've been here for about a month now, December 6th. So far, my experience has been great. The community members have been very supportive. Um, I've been very pleased with the officers I have working here, very professional. Um, that being said, um, when I got the job, I'd never seen the actual inside of the police department. Uh, you're gonna see here in a minute um, how small it is and cramped it is and um, very disorganized. So this is the outside of the police department. This is where the police officers park their patrol vehicle. There's usually only one officer on at a time, unless we have an overlapping shift for an hour or two. Um, but this is where we put our police vehicles. Uh, there's, uh, they have to be left running in conditions like this because if there's an emergency call, you can't run out and have to clear off your windshield. Uh, there is no overhead um, roof to block some of the snow or rain or other elements. It's also a good idea to have for prisoners because currently we're walking the prisoners uh, from here uh, into the building. So when visitors show up to the police department, the red light on the key fob axis uh, lets you know that it's locked. So they could hit this button and hopefully a police officer is here, which is not likely because they're probably on patrol. So if they're here after hours or on the weekends, they're not going to be able to reach uh, a police officer and then they will have to call shelter and control. It would be good to have a building where um, the police department is accessible uh, without coming to a locked door such as this. So if we had a prisoner right now, we would be walking the prisoner by um, the senior center. So depending on uh, the prisoner's demeanor, uh, they could be yelling, swearing, kicking, um, which would not be great for the senior center. Uh, also, it is in our jobs, we have a lot of cases that are sensitive in nature um, to, to include domestic violence and, and other crimes, maybe crimes against children. So. Uh, we'd also, those people would have to walk in here. So this is the front of the police department. So we have a sergeant, a full-time officer, 10 part-time police officers, and an administrative assistant. And we all work out of this one room. And this is our safe. Uh, I guess that would be considered uh, some of our security features would be the video. This is our administrative assistant desk. This is the officers slash part-time officers um, desk area. This is shared by approximately 11 people. So 11 people use this desk. This is the sergeant's desk. Uh, the sergeant is uh, in control of the sex offender registry and also um, firearms licensing. Um, there is not a lot of space uh, for him to do these extra details. Um, a lot of these documents have to be kept for a long period of time. And so, as you can see, there's really no place in here to store anything. So most of the stuff is stored in what we currently call the booking room, but it's really just a catch all. This is my desk. Um, again, I'm new, so please don't hold me responsible for how it appears. Um, I'm still learning um, about where everything is. If we were going to interview anyone or book someone, this is the room we would go to. So a prisoner would have to go through this maze or maybe the victim of a crime. Uh, we'd have to make room for them. Perhaps move a chair to one side of the desk and another chair on the other side of the desk and, 
and conduct an interview. There is no camera in here, so uh, most of the time, probably all of the time, um, booking processes and interviews uh, have the capability of being recorded. We do not have that here. Um, probably the most concerning thing that I've seen is this section uh, where the prisoners sit down. Uh, the chains coming out of the ground. Um, looks like there's a 2x6 bolted down and then the chains come off the 2x6. Um, definitely outdated is not a strong enough word. Really unacceptable. Um, so this is another thing that in the end term I would be looking to fix. I know that Berniston PD had a cage built in, but it's tough to do that here because where would the cage go to secure a prisoner? We have a lot of old fax machines and scanners. Our computers are behind the times. Our, our um, security um, systems are way behind the times. So that's something that would really benefit the police department. As far as other space we have, this would be considered a temporary evidence locker. This would be considered our storage area. So inside here, I've already looked through it. Um, and there's just a lot of old stuff. So to get to the, the bikes for bike patrol, the officers would have to go into this room. This is where the bikes would be located. I would really look forward to having a public safety complex where we can truly have a space that accommodates everything that a police department needs to do. Hello, my name is Mark Fortier, Chief of Emergency Medical Services or EMS here in the town of Northfield. We provide not only the town's first response, but we also provide the ambulance service for the citizens of the town of Northfield. We also cover Burniston in the section of Irving currently. Um, as we are currently in the process of building a new uh, public safety building, I'd like to give you a tour of the current EMS building to give you an idea of the limitations that we have within our current building. In order to understand where we want to go, you have to understand where we've been. Um, Northfield EMS started off in the basement of the fire station. Um, we were assigned to three quarters of one bay um, with no facilities other than the bay itself to hold the ambulance. Uh, we, in 2011, um, after the last building failed at town meeting, uh, we took it upon ourselves to reach out to the Sandry companies who owned a building on Main Street at 41 Main Street, old gas station, and uh, we cleaned it up to make it our own building. It, uh, it, it is functional for us currently, but it does have its limitations for future growth. And I'd like to show you around a little bit. I, I always have to give a shout out to all the people that helped us out during the time of building the facility. We have a banner in the back of our station to uh, appreciate those people. So to give you an idea of what the building looked like before we took ownership or took uh, rent rentership of it, Here's a, a picture of what it looked like. Sort of an eyesore on Main Street. And here's what we made it into currently today. It wasn't for the dedication of a lot of volunteers to help. It would have been impossible uh, to do this with very limited resources that we had. So here's our current station today. Again, looking at 41 Main Street. We have two bays as we have grown to have two, ambulance, two ambulances, uh, both at the paramedic level. As you come in, we'll come into the meeting room. Where we have staff on duty from time to time. Um, this is the, the couch where uh, a number of nights have been uh, used for sleeping. This is where the old gas station attendant used to stand and uh, watch the outside. We have a bathroom. You'll notice that there's no shower for this bathroom. It's just a toilet and a sink. We enter out 
into the apparatus bay where we have both of our ambulances located in here. A lot of tight quarters, difficult to get around the vehicles. Not a whole lot of storage. The only clean storage that we have is based on uh, having these cabinets out back here. That's Fred, Fred our training mannequin. As you come into the back, you'll notice we have a couple of cabinets for some storage, and then we have a back room in which you have the office for the chief. Uh, just be an old storage cabinet. And a lot of clutter, because there's not a whole lot of storage for anything. The desk to be able to uh, try to manage the work of the, of the organization. And then there is a small storage cabinet where the oil tank is out back here. We are unable to utilize the second floor of the station. We, and that's it. Uh, we have no ability to hold a major meeting unless we pull the trucks out of the bay, which isn't really heated. Um, we have no uh, facilities for overnight for, for people to stay other than sleeping on the couch. No place to take a shower. Um, we really, and we don't even own this property. It's owned by Sandry and the department leases it from the Sandry companies. Uh, so that's a quick tour of the EMS building. If you have any questions, by all means, or would like to take your own personal tour, let me know and we can arrange that. Thank you. Hello, I am Skip Donnell, Fire Chief here in the town of Northfield. I'm going to give you a little bit of a history and tour of the facilities that are currently housed the Northfield Fire Department. First of all, the Northfield Fire Department is a call volunteer department, so there is not anybody at the station all the time. Uh, when we get a, an emergency, uh, we are alerted by pager, we come to the station, grab the apparatus and respond to the scene. The current fire station was built in 1952. Uh, it was actually occupied by the fire department in 1953. So the building is about 70 years old. Over the years, we have found that fire apparatus has gotten larger and heavier. Uh, we are required to obviously carry more equipment. Um, and so it has prohibited us as far as what we can actually do with the building. Um, a, number, a few years ago, we started to notice that there was some cracking and spalling of the concrete upstairs here. Uh, it was later determined and we, could, we found where it was actually some deterioration occurring in the ceiling of the downstairs, which obviously supports the upper floor. It has since been um, repaired, but the unfortunate thing is, is we can no longer place the heavier apparatus on the upper floor. So we have basically shoehorned the equipment uh, that's readily, that needs to be readily available in the downstairs. So with that, I want to give you a quick tour um, of, the, of the station. Starting in the basement, there is a small kitchen area and also you'll see to the left hand side of the kitchen area are two commercial style washing machines. Those are machines that are there to wash the turnout gear of the firefighters. This allows them to clean their gear of contaminants and whatnot after returning from a fire call. With interior firefighting uh, that is done by the fire department, uh, the smoke, there's uh, ash, there's contaminants and whatnot. And it's also been found that it is cause an increase in cancer among not only full-time firefighters but also part-time firefighters. So we're actually cleaning our turnout gear in a corner or part of the kitchen. It's the only place we had space for to put in the washing machines. Going from the small kitchen downstairs, uh, you'll walk into the apparatus room. And the apparatus room, uh, the first piece of equipment you'll see is a rescue truck. It's a 1986 rescue truck we bought used. It served the town very well. 
It has all of our ex extrication equipment on it, our jaws of life, our hydraulic tools, uh, and a myriad of, of other tools that uh, augment the fire department. Next to that, you'll see is our engine one, which is our latest piece of equipment. And as you can see, that truck carries a thousand gallons of water as well as it has a large capacity pump. And uh, as you can see by the pictures and the video, that it's a tight squeeze to get all of the three of those trucks in the bay. Um, height wise, we have to make sure that the snow is cleared away from the doors as we come out. We cannot, we cannot allow the uh, cabs and the front wheels of the trucks to be raised at all because it is so tight getting from the top of the truck to the uh, concrete door opening. Um, so you'll see that and you'll also see that on our engine two, which is uh, our backup engine, uh, which also carries a thousand gallons of water. And why it's so imperative we carry at least a thousand gallons of water on our trucks is we have a large portion of the town that isn't served by hydrants. So for initial attack and for fire suppression, we have to carry as much water as we possibly can. So as you go around our engine one and our engine two, You'll see that they're backed in absolutely as far as they can be. Uh, our engine two, the ladders on the side of the truck uh, are within two inches of the rear wall. And we have just enough space to squeak around the rear of the truck. Our engine one, the, the lowest ladders are about six inches away from the back wall, but we do not have enough room behind engine one uh, to walk, even walk around behind it. It makes maintaining the trucks and going through our cleanups and also putting our trucks back into service um, kind of stressful because we don't have enough room between the trucks being closely spaced and the concrete uh, pillars that support the upper floor uh, limits the access and how much we can do down there. Here is our combination meeting room, training room, and chief's office. Right now, the chairs are stacked up due to COVID. But this is the room where we do our monthly meetings, our monthly trainings, and any other trainings that we have, as well as this is the administration area, the only administration area of the fire department. And we have a small dispatch area where we set when we have calls and the dispatch basically dispatches from here. The upper floor can support personnel. The upper floor can, can basically support nothing more than a pickup truck, uh, which is where we house a brush truck, we house our boat, and we house our ATV. And we have the storage building that the highway department had down back. We have added some insulation and some heat, uh, heat to it. And that building houses our aerial ladder, ladder truck, as well as our 1200, 50 gallon brush tanker. Fairly close proximity of the ladder truck to the overhead door. There's a step down where we had to modify the floor so that the ladder truck would fit. And tucked in beside that is our forestry tanker. Unfortunately, over the years, we've had to custom build our apparatus to fit the fire station, which is kind of a unique situation, but it has also restricted us as far as what we could do. We would love to be able to carry more water. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the space to do that. So there are, there are some restrictions in the facility that have caused us to limit what we can do when it comes to fire protection.